All right, everyone, welcome. This is Vinny here with Airbrush Savvy, and this is a video on creating wires or tubes, uh, real organic shape, try to make real natural looking wires. Um, the benefit with this is it really brings your 3D model to life, or if you're trying to uh, model up something where you know you're gonna put wires into, uh, for example, like this uh, switch box I made here, um, what you can do is know if you know what switches and what you're going to add in there you can really get a feel of okay I'm using this gauge wire here's the thickness and how big does this hole really need to be with all those wires sticking out or how is it is it going to be too tight in the box with too many wires or do I need to adjust my gauge size um, if sometimes when you're designing um, you know, it's kind of hard to tell in real life where things are going to be or how they're going to fit. Um, so you can try the best you can in CAD. And, and a lot of times we, we do our best in CAD, um, but in the real world, when we try to put things together, you're like, damn those designers, they suck. But it, it's really hard, especially if you're new and haven't had much experience of creating true, real, functional parts. Um, it's really hard a lot of times to, you know, when you're zoomed in way at something, let's say you're a quarter of a millimeter, like this box could be a quarter of a millimeter by a quarter of a mil and everything looks great. But when you try to manufacture it, you know, it, it barely fits on the end of a pen tip. Um, so sometimes getting the, uh, um, God, come back computer and we're back. All right. Thank you, display driver, for having a hiccup. But anyway, we are back. So, like I said, it, it's it's just a good way of getting a feel of, you know, do I need to increase my box size or do I need to do anything uh, to make this better? So here's a quick example. And what I'm going to do in this tutorial is show you how to make one of these spaghetti noodles or one of these wires. So let me jump over to this project. Um, so what I did was I just made two boxes. And this is what we're going to act as a like a wire terminal and we're going to put the wire inside the wire terminal um so first first what i want to do is create a sketch and i'm going to create a sketch on this plane um and the plane doesn't really quite matter um we're going to do a lot of manipulating and moving of the spline so what i'm going to use right here fit point spline and if yours isn't up here you can just go down into create and then in create, there should be spline, and then we're gonna do fit point spline. So I'll go that way. So I'll go ahead and snap it to there. And I will go over something here in about 10 minutes, but what we're gonna do is just try to, you know, click and get it over to there, add a few points and stop, and then that's good. So what we do is do finish sketch, and then look what we did here. So when I move it around, you can see everything is all on there. So right now that doesn't work and why so right now everything is constrained to that plane how do I get it to fit over here this is something I struggled with for weeks on end and then finally I had it all figured out so if you go to move and up here sometimes it'll be default on bodies and when you do that it won't let you click your sketch entity it just won't do it so what you need to do is do sketch objects and then this guy right here, this point to point, that is the key. Something else to remember here is selection. So you click that endpoint, and then you want to click origin point, which is what do you move, want to move where? So I want to move this point. Next, it jumps down here. If it doesn't automatically jump down there, what I've noticed is sometimes Fusion will, sometimes it won't. It'll automatically move down. If it doesn't, just click that. And where do we want to move it to? So if we hover over um, our tube here and go down and select that, then it, you'll see it'll it'll snap that point right in there. And we do OK. And then like something you automatically say is, well, what the heck, Vinny? That, that, that's not going to work. So what we need to do next is go back to move. This time, we're just going to go to free move. So what you want to do is click the end. You'll see this little green handle pops up. And right now, if I try to rotate, 
it's not going to do anything. You're just taking that sphere in space and just moving it around. And it's just the end of that ball on the end of the line. So it's not doing anything. What we need to do is we need to sometimes if like you, if you already clicked into it, it won't let you. So just where it says one selected, click out of that, click it again, and then click on this guy. Um, and then something else I notice what happens is if you try to move it, it moves. Let me see if I can zoom in so you can see it better. So there's the point we selected. You can see it moves away from where we originally had it locked into, and that's no good. So what I'm gonna do is come back into here, click that point, click on the end line, and then if you come back to there, it, it'll move the line, but leave that point fixed where it is. Let me get some power here before I lose you. There we go. Okay. So now, here's the real key trick here. So what we'll do, if you try to do this by just panning around, it gets real tricky. Because what you want to do is move this and then adjust your view and move it again. But it gets really tricky by doing that. The easiest way is to find where your cylinder or wherever you're trying to line it up to you want to get your green handle as parallel to that as you can and sometimes if it snaps to like a weird weird orientation like every few millimeters you can zoom in and it'll let you adjust a little bit closer how every five degrees this is in your uh, in your default settings and you can change that where it'll let you do one degree movements or five degree movements um, but for this example, that's fine. So then what I want to do is just flip to the top view. And then you see on the top view, it's way whacked out. So I want to get it back there. Go back there to right view. You can see it's off a little bit. We'll adjust that. Back to the bottom view. It's a little off. Ooh, there we go. And then back to this view. And that's not bad. So boom, there we go. Next, what we want to do is adjust the other side. You can see the other side is also wrong. So we'll do the same thing. Sketch objects, free move. Click this guy, select the handle, come back to center, see if it worked. And it's like, no, it didn't work. It's being silly. So try it again. Come back in. Let me get closer to the origin there green handle come on get it there we go all right so move our green handle and let's get back in here here we go adjust it there switch our view adjust it there switch the view again that looks good that looks good, that looks good. All right, cool, good to go. Now, so there's that. So right now, that's still, a lot of the line you can see is kind of still constrained on that plane. It moved a little bit, but it still doesn't look very natural. So here's what I was saying, something I was gonna explain in about 10 minutes. So if you want like a real natural looking line, you wanna get rid of some of these points because adding too many points, it just gets like a really kinky looking line. And you know what I mean by that. The, the line has lots of too many wiggles in it. So what I want to do is get rid of some of these wiggles. And so what we do is just click on a point, right click and delete. And let's see, let's delete this one. Let's get rid of this one. So let's just try with two. You can see when you delete some points, it just cleans that up right away. And even that like, that looks awesome. But let's uh, let's move it, because this isn't coming out of here so nice. So what I want to do is select it, and you can grab it by here. And if you move it closer, you can slide this point kind of up and down. And I want to get it so this wire is kind of coming straight out a little bit more. And it looks a little high, so I'll just grab this handle and bring it down. 
All right, so now that we've now that we've brought that down and got it looking really great, like this this looks awesome now. Um, so now what we need to do is actually turn it into something. Let's turn it into a wire. So what I want to do now is come over here and we're going to use S. So S on your keyboard is a shortcut. Um, it, it's your design shortcuts. It brings up in this little toolbox. And right there I have sweep. Um, if you don't have it in there, I think when you first create it, it comes with a couple default or it might not, it might be empty. Um, so what you want to do is if you don't have sweep in there, just in the search box, type in sweep and you'll see a pop up. And what you can do is click the little arrow and it'll pop it in your toolbox. I already have it in here. So let's just click. Oops. Let's see. I got rid of it. Let's add it back. Boom. All right. So there's sweep. Let me click it. And what pops up is single path. We're going to do profile. We're going to select this profile. And this path is our little wiggly line. And you can see it defaulted to, to cutting it. So we don't want to cut it. We want to make something. So join. And boom. There we go. There's our awesome wire. So let's add that. So there it is. I mean, th that is your wire. That is super awesome. So now, so that is like really quick, really basic. You know, we weren't going around any obstacles um, or, or anything. Um, jumping back to this box. So, you know, we, this is all the ones that I added in this box. And like I said in the beginning, it's just a great way um, to, to really bring your design, bring everything to life and really, you know, add a lot of life to your model. It, it's great. Um, so I think probably the most difficult wire that I did in here, believe it or not, is this little guy. Um, just because it was really tight and I had to add it, I actually had to go back and add a couple fit points to get it to kind of curl around. And I had to, since this is kind of on a 45 degree angle from here, I had to keep moving the screen around and, and really getting it to to work but in the end I mean it it, it looks awesome it, it really looks realistic and I love it but again that that is the quick tutorial on doing a wire or a, or a tube or, or a hose or whatever you want to do I mean you can anything where you have a, a 3d shape that you want to follow a path and get it to move around that's been the kind of the easiest way I found to do it and if you if you stumble on any other videos Feel free to, to comment, leave me a link in the below, and uh, and I'd love to check it out. You know, maybe there's someone that did it better, easier, faster. Uh, it's kind of always my mission to share my knowledge and to to bring grow everybody up um, to be to know everything I know. That challenges me to learn more, and uh, I, I believe that that hoarding hoarding knowledge is 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 bad i really think it's bad we're not we're not going to grow a society if we um if we hold in our knowledge um it's just not good I, I believe and share everything i know which challenges me to learn more so i can still share more and then together as a group we can all grow together um but anyway everybody thank you so much for this video um if you have any comments any suggestions uh anything i did wrong anything i did right please feel free to point it out. Like I said, we're always learning every day. Again, this is Vinny, Airbrush Savvy, and hope you enjoyed, and see you guys. Have a great day.